Brothers here, Miss Maggie. <laughs> oh, Tom, mother said I couldn't come to fetch you. Hush, Maggie. Come on, lead it away. Mother says you to come and have your supper. Maggie! some plum cake. My client here has no wish to be unreasonable. He is a neighbour to Mr. Tulliver. He brings his grain to Dalcott Mill. But this latest increase to the height of the dam across the River Floss is causing my client grave inconvenience. His lower meadow and the lane beside it are frequently waterlogged and impassable to my client's cattle. 
Now, that cannot be supported by custom and practice. Custom and practice does support it, Mr. Wakeham. Careful regulation of water flow is vital for the good working of a mill. Mm -hmm. And Mr. Tulliver is entitled to take Quite right, whatever... Mr. Riley. I didn't raise my dam to cause anyone trouble. I'm merely safeguarding my mill, that's all. It's an arbitration. Father will win. That man with the books and papers, he's the lawyer. Both parties to this dispute agree to arbitration. And my decision as arbitrator, duly appointed, is final. <coughs> I find for Mr. Tulliver in this matter. Uh, the yes. dam stays at his new height. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you, Mr. Riley. I'm sorry. I did my utmost for you. Charge you the utmost more like. <laughs> You think this is a circus, sir? <laughs> Tom! Your father's been asking my advice as to your schooling, Master Tulliver. My advice is Parson Stelling. Come away. Lawyers are all rascals. <laughs> Sent by the devil to do his mischief on this earth. Take that man Wakeham now. Posturing and calling from books. I saw what he was up to. Trying to make me look foolish. But you, Mr. Riley, bless you, you made Wakeham look foolish. Tom, I want you to grow up with a proper education. But I just want to work in a mill like you. No, no, no. The mill won't support you as well as me. No, you should go to a new school and be like Mr. Riley here. A surveyor, eh? maybe, perhaps, who knows? An engineer. Make your own way in the world, eh? Did that father want you to learn a dam again, father? And you, my little wench, you're far too clever for a woman. You're like a long-tailed sheep. You won't fetch a better price at market. Kazai, uh... Kazai, where's that girl? all arriving and you're not even dressed. Folks will think it's a judgment on it's me, Lucy. Lady, having such a daughter as you. They'll think I've done something wicked. Cousin Lucy. Oh, Maggie, dear, how are you? Why not, Sophie? We've seen some otters, baby ones, along the river. Oh, sister. Welcome. Oh, yes. Oh, lovely to see you. Excuse me. Look at you. Shame. Now, why can't you look like your cousin Lucy? Oh, neat and pretty with her fair curls. And when you come down, I want you to get on with your patchwork bed cover for your aunt leg, like a little lady. It's foolish. Tearing up pieces of cloth and then sewing them back together again. Severe swelling of the legs, of course. A very bad business. Well, it's not someone to whom you were close. I don't believe, Sister Sophie, not family. No, but it did upset me so there, but for the grace of God. Come now. Excuse me. Thank you, Mr. Dean. 
Tell my boy. Hello, Lucy. Hello, Uncle Dean. Well? Oh, come on, son. This is filthy. I'm going under the floss later. You must come. I know where there are otters. Maggie told me. She doesn't know. We'll just go, the two of us. We won't tell Maggie. I'll take you to the river and I'll show you where the otters are. Tom! Pia! She's mad. Half past one, indeed. Mr. Tolliver does generally like it at two, so I thought Sister Bessie Dodson's have dinner at one. That girl's hair be better thinned, shorter. Bad for her health to have it so long. No, it's not in our family, is it, Sister Jane? Unkempt hair. Maggie! You catch it, you will. Do it! My friend, Mr. Riley, the valuer, did recommend Parson Stelling strongly. A good tutor. An Oxford man. I want Tom to be even with lawyers and such like. Be better for some people if they let lawyers alone. And what's that intended to mean? I'd hold your tongue, Mr. Dean. But I'm saying nothing. Seeing as advice isn't called for. A very rare sight indeed, Mrs. Glegg. You not giving of advice. I don't know about giving. I've been over ready at lending, I'll admit to that. You've had the interest on that loan you gave me. You can have your loan. I'll pay you back now if you like. Oh, sister, don't be so quarrelsome or you'll have a fit and we'll all be in mourning again. I wouldn't be here being abused if there weren't them in our family as married worse than they might have done. Oh, sister Chen! My family are as good as you Dodsons. Better! for not having such a damned ill-tempered woman in it! Well, I'm not staying any longer to be swore at! Oh! You wicked girl! Oh! You'll break your mother's heart! What little girl's this? We don't know her. Mr Glegg? Little girls who cut their hair should be whipped, fed on bread and water. You were right to cut it off if it plagued you. Father will take your part. Gritty, good day to you. Brother. Will you come in? I've not the time. Thank you. Sister, I've need of the uh, 300 pounds I lent you. Oh. We've had another bad year, brother. I can't deny that. I said you'd come to grief marrying that man. Never had a penny, never will. I mortgaged my mill to pay for your dowry. And then I lent him 300 pounds. Oh, we'll have to sell up. I don't know where else to find it. 
My wife's sisters demanded the 500 pounds I borrowed from her. And there's the expense of my son's education. And how are your two, Edward? Yeah, both well, thank you. Oh, you must bring them. Maggie especially. Oh, she's such a loving child. And so quick and clever. She takes after our family. <laughs> None of her mother's in her. Don't you fret, Gritty. I'll manage without that money for a little while longer. Tutor. Work hard, lad. Goodbye. The whole term. I'll come and visit, eh? Boy, come. You haven't grasped even the basic principles, my dear Thomas. Onward, we shall fashion a scholar from you yet. Hypotenuse, thus, make a square from it, equals the square from this side. And this side. Do you see? Is the fog lifting? And dear God, bless and keep my mother and my father. And bless and keep my little sister Maggie. Make a visit soon. And make Mr. Stelling say I needn't do geometry anymore. Amen. Totally gone to lawyer Wakem. This man Pivot has bought all the fields from the copse of trees there, right over to the lane there, all up river of us. He's set on an irrigation scheme that's going to draw water from the floss. We'll have the mill pond dropping a level. He's a rich man, Mr. Tulliver. Rich men do get their way as often as not. I want none of that feeble talk, Luke. The old cop mill was here first. Suits you. 
I don't think I am, old father. Will you ask Mr. Stelling not to make me do geometry? What? What's that? I'll help you, Tom. Mr. Tulliver, good day. <laughs> good day. Ask him if I can stay. <laughs> the wench would like to know if she can stay for a few days. A week, perhaps. My dear, you shall stay two weeks. Mrs. Stelling and I shall have a house full. I have a second pupil starting next week. Mr. Wakeham's son, Philip. How do you know? I don't mind leaving here, you know, Father. What? Well, you don't mean to study with Mr. Wakeham's son, do you? The lad's a poor, deformed creature. And there's little of his father in him, I hear. It's a sign Stelling's a good teacher. Wakeham knows meal from Bran. Go on, get up. Go on. Good. You have to look. Look and draw. Waken. Do you love your father? Yes. Of course. Don't you love yours? This is my sister Maggie. She's just visiting. She's not a scholar here. I'm being sent to a girls' school after Christmas. This book is full of magical stories. Latin stories? And Greek. I wish Mr. Stelling would let us go fishing. Have you ever been fishing? Fishing's boring. This story is about Ulysses, his travels, and all the hardships he endures. Quick! Rock! About Anne! About Anne! About Owen! About turn and halt! Relax the shoulders, Master Tulliver. But don't droop. Is that the sword you used in battles, Mr. Poulter? Could I see it? A very dangerous weapon, my lad. An edge is what you could shave with. Ah! Ah! <laughs> Wakeham, come and watch Mr. Poulter. I'm not interested in sword drill. But you should try. Go away, you lumbering idiot. You know I won't hit you, because you're no better than a girl. And I'm an honest man, son. Your father's a rogue, everyone says so. I like Philip. He said he loves his father. He couldn't choose his father. Bad men can have good sons. <sighs> Mr. Waker makes father so cross. He talks about Mr. Pivert and irrigation and lawyers and courts all the time. It makes mother cross. But father will win. I think women are much crosser than men. Mother tells me of much more than father does. You'll be a woman one day. I should be a clever woman. Then you'll be a big head and everyone will hate you. 
You won't hate me, will you? Philip? Yes. Sing a song then, would you? I can concentrate better like this. My ship is rigged and ready and I must be sailing When shall I return, love? I just do not know I shall cross oceans Be guided by the star's light And the best star of all is the light in your window If you had a brother who was like me would you still have loved him as much as you do Tom? Better. Well, not better. I couldn't love anyone more than I love Tom, but as much, I should be so sorry for you. You're so clever. I wish you were my brother. You'll go away, and you'll forget all about me. I shan't forget you. And I'll never forget you. Whenever I'm very unhappy, I shall think about you. I like your eyes very much. Do you? They seem to be trying to speak kindly. I think you're fonder of me than Tom is. Would you like me to kiss you the way I do Tom? Yes, very much. Nobody kisses me. I shall remember you always. And when we meet again, I shall kiss you again. Tell me, Philip, how are you finding Parson Stelling? Tolliver takes a lion's share of his energies. Dimwit, is he? He has no desire to learn. His father is wasting his money. How's the fight? Pivart has to irrigate that land or it'll be worthless to him. And Tulliver thinks his mill is sacred. And he's wrong. Water mills are being replaced by steam. And the sensible owners know they can't always carry the day anymore. Tulliver won't compromise. He's a fool. And in the end, he'll see he's a fool. People say that Wickham means me no harm. Oh, I know that. But he's one of these fine gentlemen that gets money out of doing business with poorer folk. And when he's made beggars of the mill, give them charity. 
But I know what's right. And if that means going to court, then so be it. But we've a long way to go. Lucy, dear, I need to take you. You have as little to do with that son of his as you can, Tom. If he lives long enough to inherit his father's ill-gotten gains, there'll be a curse on him. Should be together always. Maggie, come quickly. woven so prettily. Elizabeth Dodson. And now they'll all be sold and gone into strange people's houses and cut up and wore out even before I'm dead. Mother, when you talk so as if you cared only for things with your name on and not for father's. Bessie, never mind your linen. Your husband lies upstairs helpless with not a penny to call his own. Well, everything's lost, that's clear. Borrowed and borrowed. Now this court judgment has finished him. And there's his lawyer to pay. Pivot's lawyer. And the damage is too, that is so. It is, Mrs. Clare. Yeah. Well, he's right. Do you feel what disgrace he's brought on our family and be humble? You always said it would end in grief marrying Mr. Tulliver. He's brought me to this. Don't speak badly of father. Hush, Maggie. Aunt Glegg, since you think it's such a disgrace if everything be sold up, why not prevent it? You could advance the money you and Aunt Dean are planning to leave Maggie and me and pay what's owing. Mm, that's all very well and good, Tom, but what about the interest that your aunts enjoy on the money while it's invested? Have you thought of that? I'd work and pay that. I'd work at anything to save Mother having to part with her things. Good lad. Well spoken. Well spoken, is it? That's my money you seem so ready to dispose of, left to me by my father. I've saved it and added to it year by year. Well, I suppose I could buy some of Bessie's china, though I don't care for the pattern very much. Well, why do you come here then? Just talking and interfering and scolding if you don't mean to help us. Father's better than any of you. He'd have helped you if you'd been in trouble. Hush, Maggie. Don't hush me. 
He's lent money to Aunt Gritty and never pressed for it. Oh, my sweet child, I feel torn in two. How dare you all blame him and damn him like this. Tom and I don't want your money. We'll do without you. I believe that scoundrel Wickham has been planning all along to ruin my father. Oh, Tom, I'm sure that's not so. Mind you, never speak to Philip again. I suppose you understand the count, huh? Step up, step up. I write well, Uncle. I have a sample. I told you, Father. I wasn't in favor of it, schooling with that parson Sterling. I'm fine for the likes of young Stephen Guest. You saw me with him just now. That's his father up there, Mr. Guest of Guest and Company. You see, Uncle, I do want to enter some business, even if it's at the bottom, where I can get on. You've been educated a bit soft-handed, my lad. You should do something appropriate, use your Latin or whatnot. I need to pay the debts, and I shall. If there's a vacancy, sir, anything, I'll take it. In the warehouse, on the wharf. I want to learn about trading, Uncle. I want to work hard. What shall we start the bins at, gentlemen? I start at two pounds. Anyone give me two pounds? Two pounds for you, sir. Two pounds and ten shillings. Two pounds and ten shillings. Three pounds. Anyone give me three pounds? Three pounds and ten shillings. Three pounds and ten shillings. So to the gentleman there, number 14. Oh, Item 15. Good. This very pretty uh, child's rocking chair. I hope, sir, you're not thinking I bear you any ill will because of my husband's lawsuit and the bailiffs being put in and my linen sold. Why have you come to see me, Mrs. Tulliver? If you please, sir. I'm not defending my husband for being so hot about the irrigation. And as for his fieriness and lawing, and now with him struck down as if with death. What does all this mean? What I mean is, what I came to say is, I can't believe but you'll behave like a gentleman and not by the mill. Who told you I meant to buy it? Mr. Dean. He says as guest and company could buy it and let my husband manage it. But that's only if you didn't bid for it and raise the price. But what if I bought it and let your husband manage it? Oh, he could never be got to do it, sir. Your name's like poison to him. And as he looks at it, 
You've been the ruin of... He's a pig-headed fool! Please excuse me, I have business to attend to. They do say is when Dolcott Mill changes hands, the river's angry, and it's bad luck. Yes. Yes. Please don't let on I've been to speak to you. My son will be very angry with me for demeaning myself, and I've trouble enough without being scolded by my own children. Do I have any more bids for the property known as Dogcart Mill? The house, the mill, and outbuildings, together with land as described in the particulars of sale. First time. Second. So to Jay Wick on the squad. Elizabeth Dodson. Twenty years since I was married. Come next Lady Day. Don't bear me any ill will, Bessie. We were promised for better or for worse. I never thought it'd be so worse as this. Mother? No. Now let us speak. Well, I just... Wickham's got everything. So what's the use of turning against him? He says you can stay here and have the managing of the mill and 30 shillings a week and a horse to ride to market. I shall serve under John Wickham. And I shall serve him like an honest man. But I shall never hold my head up anymore. I'm like a tree that's broken. And I'll never forgive him. Tom, write it in the Bible, will you? Father, it's wicked to curse and bear malice. Right. That Edward Tulliver took service under John Wakeham to make amends to my wife. And because I want to die in the house where I was born and where my father was born. And put that I don't forgive John Wakeham and that I wish evil may befall him. Write that. And write that you shall always remember what John Wakeham has done to your father. And that you shall make him and his descendants feel it, should the occasion come. Father, you mustn't do this. Be quiet, Maggie. I shall write it. Sign it. My father is so changed, Lucy. He's silent and bitter. He talks about blame and I hate it. My mother pines for her lost linen and crockery. Sometimes I feel so angry I hate them, Lucy. And then I cry for shame at turning my back on their sadness. And how is Tom? 
I know my father has been pleased with him since he began work at Guest and Co. Tom has little time for me. He hardly seems to mind anymore what I'm thinking or what I'm feeling. He, he just works and works. That's all he needs, Lucy, his task, his steady purpose. Whereas I... Dearest Maggie... I want there to be great things, beautiful things in my life. I... It's a sin, isn't it? To love myself, to seek my own happiness. Nothing ever endures, does it? I want to be happy. I see nothing wrong in that. I want to love and be loved. Perhaps to be married, to have my children. These are joys which God has made for us, surely. If we desired nothing, if we yearn for nothing, then we cannot be disappointed. more in here than there should be. It's my contribution. I've been taking in plain sewing from the linen shop. I don't like my sister to do such things. Don't lower yourself in that way. I'll pay the debts. Let the wench help if she's a mind too. Every creditor must be paid, I know that. Father, do you think we might venture some of the money? Venture some to make much more. How so? We could do a little trading. I've looked into it most carefully. No. There's luck involved in trading. And luck sure to go against me. Good to see you home. You stayed in Italy too long. You found me in my favourite place. We came here when we were children. We called it the Red Deeps. You don't mind that I followed you here? No. I, I wanted to talk to you, but, well, not at home. Not with our fathers there. <laughs> oh! What a strange little girl I was. 
Am I how you expected me to be now? Much more beautiful. Oh. Everything's changed. That's what I wanted to say to you, that I cannot meet with you. It can't be right to sacrifice everything to other people's feelings. I'll not make my father's life any harder for him. I would give up a great deal for my father, but not a friendship or an attachment. Tom has told me never to speak to you again. He doesn't change his mind. What about me? Well, what about us both? If we begin to meet together, in the end we'll be found out. And parting will be more painful. I used to be so discontented because I couldn't have what I wanted. But I've given that up now. Wishing? If we give up wishing, we cease to be alive. We must hunger after what we feel to be beautiful and good. I love fine paintings. I long to be able to paint them myself. There are other things I long for too. Things which other men have, which will always be denied me. I wish you didn't think so. Then let me see you sometimes. I'll come here as often as I can, at about this time. So I hope to see you. There'll be chance meetings, won't they? You won't feel you've done wrong. I remember saying all those years ago that you care for me more than Tom does. Do you ever care for me more than you do for him? The first thing I ever remember in my life is standing by the river floss holding Tom's hand. Please just seem to go out more. Fresh air puts colour in your face. Dear Philip, you must have seen and learnt so much over all this time. I wasn't sure that you'd still care for me. I knew you'd be the same as when we were children. <laughs> These things which affect us the most, they do so in ways we can never fully explain. Why should one piece of music affect me so much more than any other? Sing to me. And I shan't look. Oh. <laughs> oh. My ship is rigged and ready, and I must be sailing. When shall I return, love? I just do not know. I shall cross oceans, be guided by the star's light. But the best star of all is the light in your window? I remember how much you love books, my dear. I shall bring you heaps of them. I've given up books. Why? Why do you starve your mind in this way? You're stultifying yourself. You'll be thrown back into the world one day and these simple satisfactions you deny yourself will assault you as if they were savage appetites. Don't deny yourself these things. Be that brilliant woman you are always destined to be. Full of fire and, and wit and imagination. 
<laughs> Once I can buy my first goods and sell them, I shall be able to repay your initial stake. I can use the profit from each little transaction to buy goods for the next. But I want to use the knowledge I've gained in working for you, sir. Use it well. We must repay all the debts. My wages and my father's will never be enough. My father is ill with worry about it. I've often thought that you might love a man other women were not likely to love. Well, that would depend what they didn't like him for. Um, suppose it was a man not conceited at all who had been marked out from childhood for a particular kind of suffering who loved you. And you were the day star of his life. I was a fool. Please forget I said that. I've never thought of you as a lover. I mean, it's been just like a story that you dream of, that anyone should want to marry me. Do you love me? Surely it's best we don't speak of it, Philip. We can't even be friends except in secret. Our meetings have been such a delight. All our talks and the books. But they've made me restless again. and I grow weary of my home again and that cuts me to the heart. Don't think about the past. Think about the future of our love. Every obstacle can be overcome in time. We need only wait. I can live on hope. You promised me that when you saw me again, you'd kiss me. Kiss me now. I don't want pity. I don't think I could love anyone better than I love you. It's brother and sister. Oh, Philip. Wake him. How dare you trifle with my family's name and respectability. Even friendship with my sister's out of the question. Neither your father nor her father would ever consent to marriage. You must see that. So what do you think you're about then with your secret meetings? Maggie is dearer to me than she is to you. You are incapable of understanding what I feel for her. You come near her again, and that puny, miserable body of yours shall not protect you. You brain us off. I'll thrash you, Wakeham, and hold you up to public laughter. Stop it! I despise you for sneering at his deformity. You've been finding fault with people all your life. You haven't got a mind large enough to see that anything can be better than your conduct and your petty aims. I know I've done wrong, but it's because I have feelings which you have never had, and you never you will have! so full of love and tenderness, and how do you show it? By disobeying and deceiving us! Oh, you enjoyed punishing me. You have no pity. 
No sense of your own sins. All you ever do is thank God for your own virtues. I have a different way of showing my affections. Oh, you're at the helm, aren't you? With your clever trading. Lucy's told me how impressed her father is, how grateful father will be for your achievements. But that is because you are a man and you have power in the world. If you can do nothing, then submit to those who can. I will submit to what I believe to be right and don't suppose I will give up Philip just in obedience to you. I do swear on the Bible never to see him again or I'll tell father. You must choose. Choose! Gentlemen, this meeting has been called for the benefit of those persons who regard themselves still as creditors against Mr. Edward Tulliver of Dorcott Mill. We welcome you all here today. It's a sad fact in this puzzling world that there are rascals in it. I name no one today, but there are those that seem able to take hold of a man's luck and break it into pieces. But I can tell you today that I have a son, Tom here, who has taken hold of my luck and fair glued it back together again. I spent a deal on his education and I consider it well spent. You've missed the important part, man. I... <clears throat> I would just like to say that... He's made 300 pounds. What? He borrowed a scrap from my brother-in-law, Mr. Dean, here. And with a lot of hard work, he made 300 pounds. Oh, good boy. And you'll all be paid. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> Somebody else to work in your mill for you. You been drinking, sir? Huh? At your little meeting? I don't need drink to see that I should no longer work for a scoundrel like you. Then don't! You can leave the mill tomorrow, sir. Now let me pass, <laughs> damn you! You hear me first? <laughs> Thank <laughs> you. 
turn. A bit. That was fair. I never wanted anything but was fair. You forgive him. You forgive everyone now. No, my little witch. I don't forgive him. I'll get it back. Good morning, Mrs. Tulliver. Good morning, Mr. Guest. I must say, you keep Mr. Dean's house very well. Thank you, sir. My love, 
I have some important news, Stephen. My cousin Maggie is coming to stay. Mm. And there is no girl in the world I love as much. I hope she doesn't have the conversational abilities of her mother. That's horrid of you, Mr. Guest. Poor Aunt Bessie. All during Mother's illness. And after she died. Bessie was such a comfort to me. I'm told her brother won't tolerate being in the same room as my friend Philip Wakem. Is Maggie Tulliver the same? She's had a very dreary time since her father died and they had to leave the mill. Oh, you had better warn Philip. He's such a sensitive soul. Only your delicate touch can lay his ruffled feathers. Both my father and your father think highly of Tom Tulliver. The rising star in Guest and Co's firmament. Papa says he's very principled. And proud as Lucifer, I suspect. in you that makes you look so fine in shabby clothes. I would vanish. You enjoy other people's happiness so much. I wish I was like you. You've had such a dull and weary life till now. But it's going to change. I shall see to it. You shall have new clothes and good music and delicious do-nothing days. Cousin Maggie. Maggie? Stephen Guest. <laughs> I think Mr. Guest imagined you differently. I wish I could always find reality so much more beautiful than my preconceptions. So, now you've said what you had to say. But my dear Maggie, you've always said you love to feel admired. Too well, but being paid artful compliments has never made me feel like that. I shall never pay you another, Miss Tulliver. Thank you. It will be proof of your respect. Let's go on the river. I'll fetch my cloak. You will like Maggie, won't you? I should like to row. Oh. I'll need to be taught. Lucy, you must sit in the stern and help our trim. I warn you, if I try something, I must do well at it or I don't do it at all. Tell me what you think of Stephen. Good and bad, too. Oh, I think you should humiliate him a little. A lover should not be so at ease. <laughs> Nonsense. You think him conceited, I see that. But you don't dislike him, do you? How could I dislike anyone who promised to make you happy? Philip Wakem will be home again from his travel soon. We shall have good times together, the four of us. We shall sing and play music. Oh, I can't. I promised Tom I wouldn't speak to Philip without his consent. Tom cannot be such a tyrant. 
I have such a dread of opening the subject with him and getting into a quarrel again. It's beautiful you love Philip. I never thought such happiness would befall him. I shall contrive it. I shall make it possible. You shall marry Philip when I marry Stephen. How gritty. Maggie. Is Tommy? I want you to absolve me from my promise about Philip Wakeham. I wish to see him. Not for myself, I wouldn't ask that. But for Lucy's sake, she knows him and she'd like him to come to her house. Very well. Is that all? Oh, Tom, you're so hard on me. I've kept my promise all this time. And you're always in extremes. You've no self-command. I see that even the idea of marriage would be wrong. I've, I've given up thinking of him as a lover. I see. Well, I don't want to overstrain matters. I wish to be as good a brother to you as you will let me. You don't think me altogether wicked, then? No. Good day. I, I, I was passing by. Lucy's out. Would you tell her Philip Wakeham is back from abroad? And I bought the music she asked for. Do you like to sit on your own? If that's not uncivil of me. With your plain sewing? A habit. Life has been hard for you. Well then, uh, goodbye, Miss Tulliver. Oh, won't you stay? I... I didn't mean... No. No, really. The boat's waiting for me. But you'll tell your cousin, then. About Philip. Yes. And the music. Yes. Extremely good hand, you <laughs> We can see each other. 
spend time together. Oh. <laughs> While I'm here, I must look for more work soon. I will not live in a state of dependence. Not on Lucy, nor on my brother, though he'd like me to. Why seek a world away from those who love you? I don't think much happiness can come to me from love. I've always had such pain mingled in it. We cannot escape pain. Pain is part of life, as love is. Philip, you're my conscience. <laughs> Something happened. <laughs> you look so well. Philip, I had the most interesting conversation with my father yesterday. He was asking about your father and whether he was losing interest in the mill. You see, Guest and Co. might be amenable to buying it. And if they did, you'd persuade your father to hand it back to the Tullivers? He does think so highly of Tom. Really? Would you raise it with your father? It would bring so much joy to Bessie. And to Maggie, of course. If Tom got the mill back because your father wanted to make amends, he might be more. About Maggie and you. This is an unpleasant shock. Well, you're a grown man. You can marry her if you want. I have nothing. Dabbler in art. Ah. You need my money. I need your blessing. I need to know it meets with your acceptance. Oh, you ask too much, Philip. This woman's father was the bane of my life, and he nearly murdered me. It had nothing to do with her. She uh, cares for you? I believe so. As for me, she is everything. Thank you. As happy as I once was. I know you hardly remember your mother. It's a great pity I didn't commission someone with your talents to make a portrait of her. Father, there's another matter. The mill. It's that damn mill again. Oh, let them have the wretched place. There. I'll sell it. But I'll have no direct dealings with young Tulliver. You can swallow him for the sake of his pretty sister if you like. But I have no source which will make him go down. I must be going. I have to prepare for my journey to Newcastle tomorrow. Five minutes more of your valuable time. Mrs. Tulliver. I have something very special for you. deeds to Dalcott Mill. Oh. 
Tom, I did want to say that all this has been possible because Mr. Wakem agreed to sell Dolcott Mill. Do not poison my joy, Lucy. Mr. Wakem wants to make amends. You've rehearsed this, I take it. I'm to be softened in this way. You expect to gain my approval to there being more between you and Philip Wakem. Than... Do you believe this restitution can remove the hurt of so many years? The hurt to father? Deserve such devotion. We must become like this to overcome the harshness of our circumstances. Oh. There is a kind, gentle Tom. I fear you'll never see that side of him. I will do nothing which would divide me from Tom forever. And that's the only reason that keeps us apart. It's the only reason. It doesn't matter what a man suffers. It's only your woman's dignity you care about. I'm mad with love for you, Maggie. Please leave me. around these barriers between you and Philip come into the house presently it's cold and I have a plan you must come and hear me announce it wrong what I did. Say you forgive me. I, I don't think any evil of you, but please leave me now. Then why do you say that? Are you angry with me? Oh, do look at me. Please go away. Now, here's my plan. I think we should all four of us have an outing on the river. We've never done that. Maggie does love boating. Tomorrow? I hate a large party in a boat. It cannot be tomorrow. I have to go and visit my Aunt Gritty for a few days. Oh. Well, directly you return. Four is not so many. <laughs> now, we ladies bid you gentlemen good night.
Are you making studies for a painting? I saw you sitting there just now. You didn't appear to be engaged in conversation of any kind. Well, let's just say I've been studying expression. Oh, Miss Tulliver's, perhaps. Rather a savage one tonight, I think. Rather the fallen princess. I've just been snubbed as usual. Hypocrite. given me say you have yes but you shouldn't have come here I have fought it I have fought it and tried to be true to other claims Maggie I love you with my whole soul you mustn't say these things I mustn't hear them it's no use well, it is of use Stephen there's no end to this misery think of Lucy I do think of her and I have other ties you are engaged to Philip Wakeham isn't that so I don't mean to marry anyone else. Maggie, if you loved me as I love you, we should throw everything else to the winds for the sake of belonging to one another. I'd rather die than fall into that temptation. Tell me you don't care for me, then. Tell me you love someone else better. If you do love me, then it's better we marry one another. We can't help the pain we'll cause. These ties bind us from childhood. Lucy is the dearest person to me. Ties made in blindness. These pledges cannot be broken, else there's no fidelity ever in our but lives. to deny our true feelings is the greater wrong. To pretend is wrong. That will cause their misery too. Surely you must see that. Love is natural. But so is pity. Pity and faithfulness and memory. These feelings would remain with me and our love would be poisoned. Stephen, please, don't urge me. Help me. Help me, because I love you. One kiss. Before we part, one kiss. Oh, Maggie, Lucy asked me to say she's very sorry about the boat trip, but she had to go into town with Mr. Dean. It was something rather urgent, apparently. They set off bright and early. Lucy not ready yet? She can't come. I had a note from Philip. It was delivered round just before I left. He's unwell. And he can't come either. Unwell? Oh, but we can't. Not just the two of us. We mustn't go.
Then we'll stay here. We can't stay here. Then we'll go. We shan't be long together. Too far. We have planned nothing. This has happened through the actions of others. Lucy. You can't endure other people's anger. Their the condemnation. Tom will condemn you if you marry Philip. Philip will condemn you if you marry me. So will Lucy. We must go back. Turn the boat. Is that what you want? Is it? Maggie? Maggie? Did you have a fine time on the river? They're not back. Listen. What? What's happened? Not an accident. They've been seen. A lad on the wharf side did see them. Philip? Mr. Wakeham couldn't go either. Just Mr. Guest and Maggie. They were seen boarding one of the large boats. Selfish and hard. I failed Lucy and Philip. The blow has been struck against them both. I if you go back now, you'll achieve nothing. Except strike another blow against me. You cannot do that. Not now. I've never embraced this. I've let myself drift. Stephen, this has not been my true will. Oh, good God, what sort of love is this? that you can weigh and balance and change. My love isn't like that. I would do anything for us to be together. We can't choose happiness. Not for ourselves or anyone else. We can only choose whether we listen to our conscience.
I'm not as guilty as you believe me to be. I never meant to give way to my feelings. I've had to struggle with my feelings too. I conquered them. And I submitted to all these years of toil because I believed it was my duty to do that. And now you've disgraced us. Disgraced our father's name. I repent it bitterly. I want to make amends. There can be no amends. You used Philip Wakeham as a screen to deceive Lucy. I'm here. <laughs> I've come home. There is no home for you here. Your behavior, your deception, disgusts me. The very sight of you is hateful. I braced myself to hear of your marriage. I thought of suicide, but I could not lay that black shadow over your joy. Now I see I was wrong. There's something in you stronger than your love for him. I shouldn't have burdened you with my need. I forced words from you, which I now see you felt as chains. I'm still yours, but not with selfish wishes. I've reached another kind of love. I have a faith in you, rather, in which you are free. me to see you away from the mill, away from your home. I shan't be here long. You're all alone here with Gritty and her family away. Where's your cake? I must look for work away from here. I must get my own bread. How's Lucy? She's on the mend, my dear. Never you fret. I would so like to see her. I've written her a letter. Would you take it to her? Too, Lucy. Forgive him. You will win him back. You are a better person than me. You have surrendered him to me. But I could never surrender him to you.
Dearest Maggie, what you have done is beyond my comprehension. You have sacrificed us both to this twisted notion of goodness which you have. People will tell you of schemes afoot to bring me to where Lucy will be on holiday. But even if I drag myself here and there, my soul is still where you left me. Oh, Maggie, just say you want me to come back to you and I will. Magsy. Tom. I prayed you'd come. Is Mother safe? She's visiting Lucy. Come down on the hoist.